Mario has had a ton of enemies over the years, but one of the most mysterious and potentially most dangerous is himself. That's right, one of Mario's most iconic enemies was a shadowy doppelganger, appropriately called Shadow Mario. And for a time, it felt like Shadow Mario marked the beginning of a potential recurring threat. After all, this evil Mario could show up anywhere, and seemingly at any time. But then, he suddenly stopped, and with it being almost 10 years since his last new appearance, you might even say that Shadow Mario became just a shadow of his former self. But why? Well, it's time to cast a searchlight over this dark shadow and discover who Shadow Mario really is, what happened to him, and maybe even find out exactly where he's been this whole time. Welcome to Missing in Action, where we take a look back at various game elements that have mysteriously gone missing. The Shadow Mario debuted in 2002's Super Mario Sunshine as the main antagonist. He ventured all over the tropical destination of Isle Delfino, defiling it by painting graffiti with a magic paintbrush to create pollution and chaos for the islanders, all in Mario's name, or at least appearance. Of course, while he certainly closely resembles Mario, with a nearly identically shaved body, along with the same iconic mustache and M emblem cap, He's also partially translucent and entirely blue. Plus, he has bright glowing red eyes and a distorted high-pitched voice. So he doesn't really look exactly like him. Unfortunately, it was enough to fool the islanders into thinking it was Mario himself creating all of these problems, leading to them falsely imprisoning the poor plumber and sentencing him with a total sham of a trial. No! Successful in his primary goal, Shadow Mario quickly turned his attention to his next one, kidnapping Princess Peach. Huh, that's a little sus. Wonder if he has any connection to that other guy. Well, yeah, because as it turns out, Shadow Mario isn't really his own character. Instead, it's all an act by Bowser Jr., as in Bowser's son, who was also first introduced in this game, and let me tell you, his reveal was quite the surprise back in the day. Thanks to the magic paintbrush he obtained from somewhere, he was able to use it to fulfill his wishes through art and graffiti, disguising himself as Mario while creating monsters and havoc all over the island. And in his reveal, he admits that his plan all along was to get Mario sent to prison. And that's some evil scheme for just a child. <laughs> and we thought Bowser was bad. Even after his reveal as Bowser Jr., Mario's encounters with the Shadow Doppelganger continue throughout the game. He can be found in every location of Isle Delfino. He consistently appears in the seventh episode of each level, where the objective is simply to defeat him by chasing him down and spraying him with water. But he also makes quick appearances at the start of every secret course scattered throughout the game, where he can be seen stealing flood from Mario, preventing him from using it for the duration of the level. He also appears in the hub, Delfino Plaza, a few times, holding a new nozzle upgrade for flood and even a Yoshi egg. Somehow, he must have stolen these different abilities. So by defeating him, Mario can gain access to them. We even get snippets of Shadow Mario's, or Bowser Jr.'s, main goal for stealing these items. And he basically just wants to cause more chaos and have more fun. Unsurprisingly, Shadow Mario doesn't just look like Mario, but moves like him too, performing similar moves like wall jumps. Despite this, Mario's own special abilities are never actually used to attack Shadow Mario, unlike most other enemies. Mario can't grab his shadow, or jump on his head, or even ground pound him. Shadow Mario could only be defeated with water, be it through Mario's use of Flood, or from Yoshi spitting out juice. He's technically made from the graffiti too, after all. It's an interesting contrast to the other games that feature shadowy doppelgangers. Dark Link in Ocarina of Time, for example, is a battle of Link against himself, swordplay against swordplay. But Shadow Mario is not a contest of who can jump on each other's head the fastest. Even though Mario encounters Shadow Mario throughout the game, the final battle doesn't involve him at all. At least, not technically. Because Bowser Jr. is there, just not in shadow form. Perhaps because of being caught off guard while enjoying a nice hot tub with his dad. Plus, we already know Shadow Mario doesn't exactly like the whole water thing. With the disguises off, the true enemy is clear. It's no longer a battle of Mario versus himself, but good old Mario versus Bowser, with occasional assistance from Bowser Jr. 
And although Shadow Mario isn't seen or mentioned again, something curious does happen when the game is cleared without all 120 Shine Sprites. Bowser Jr.'s Magic Paintbrush found by Il Pantissimo. As in, the runner who's clearly a human, or at least human-like, but tries to pass himself off as a Pianta instead. Isn't it odd that the person who discovers the source of the Shadow Mario disguise is someone who wears a disguise themselves? It's possible Nintendo wanted to imply that any future Shadow Mario appearances may actually be Il Pantissimo challenging his rival, except for the fact that the Magic Paintbrush becomes a defining tool in Bowser Jr.'s arsenal for years to come, and Il Pantissimo is never seen again. Hmm. While Super Mario Sunshine was Shadow Mario's debut and defining appearance, it wasn't his only one. I mean, besides the whole secretly being Bowser Jr. thing, who's obviously still appearing in games to this day. Because Shadow Mario made his playable debut just a year later in Mario Golf Toadstool Tour, as a secret unlockable character alongside Bowser Jr. Which raises some interesting questions. Did we technically unlock the same character twice? Or is Shadow Mario his own independent entity now? In any case, he's not without a few changes this time. While he retains his transparent blue body and overall Mario shape, his voice is much deeper than before. And he's lost the glowing red eyes. Perhaps a sign that he's just here for a fun time? Speaking of which, his stats are almost like a fusion between Mario and Luigi's and his animations see him running around as much as he did in Mario Sunshine. Not only was this Shadow Mario's first playable appearance, but the same could be said for Bowser Jr., as Bowser Jr., and P.D. Piranha too. So clearly, Mario Sunshine was set to be a defining influence for the Mario spin-off games for the foreseeable future, and Shadow Mario was seemingly to stay for quite some time to come. Except he didn't. While Bowser Jr. and P.D. Piranha went on to appear as playable characters in Mario Kart Double Dash and Mario Power Tennis, Shadow Mario was left behind. Even 2005's Mario Superstar Baseball, which had a massive roster and featured a heavy Sunshine influence, added not only Bowser Jr. and P.D. Piranha, but even the Piantas and Nokis of Isle Delfino as well. And yet, Shadow Mario was nowhere to be found. It wasn't until 2008, five years after his last appearance, that he made a minor cameo in Super Smash Bros. Brawl, as a collectible sticker. Wow. And that's despite Mario Sunshine having an impressive presence in this game, with Delfino Plaza appearing as a brand new stage, and Flood becoming part of Mario's moveset. So seeing Shadow Mario in any form wasn't surprising, but as a mere sticker wasn't exactly a promising sign of things to come as he would go another six years without any appearances at all. But things finally changed in 2014. Eleven years after his last real appearance, Shadow Mario was finally back, this time in Super Smash Bros. for Wii U and 3DS, as a playable character at that. Kind of, at least. Because Bowser Jr. joined the roster as a brand new fighter, and as it turns out, his final smash is a callback to his origins. Bowser Jr. once again pulls out the paintbrush and transforms into Shadow Mario. He then paints a large X across the screen, damaging any foes that touch it before it explodes. And once the painting is done, the disguise is removed, and Bowser Jr. takes the stage again. Since Shadow Mario can't even really be controlled during this final smash, one could argue it's mostly a glorified cameo. But hey, it's way better than a collectible sticker. Well, he actually appears as a collectible in this game too, because just like every other Final Smash, Shadow Mario Paint, Bowser Jr.'s Final Smash, gets its own trophy in the Wii U version too. It's nice to have this blue Mario placed front and center again. Perhaps not surprisingly at this point, Shadow Mario's only appearance four years later was once again in the Smash Brothers, this time being 2018 Smash Ultimate. And it's exactly in the same role as before, since Bowser Jr.'s Final Smash is largely unchanged. He also appears as a spirit battle, against a Bowser Jr. that quickly charges to use his final smash on Delfino Plaza, with the floor being sticky, almost as if it's covered in paint. It's almost like battling Bowser Jr. and Shadow Mario in Sunshine. Almost. And that does it for Shadow Mario's appearances, outside of 2020's port of Mario Sunshine in Super Mario 3D All-Stars. 
this shadowy doppelganger was once thought to be a potential staple to the series, but was quickly reduced to a Smash Bros cameo, and has since been almost completely ignored in the Mario series as a whole. But is that entirely true? See, Shadow Mario as a specific entity may have largely disappeared after 2003, but the idea of a Shadow Mario-like doppelganger has persisted over the years, in many forms. But before we get into those forms, don't forget to click that subscribe button for more Missing in Action and other videos from us here at Game Explain. Anyway, the first was in 2007's Super Mario Galaxy, where a special cosmic comet would appear, creating a mysterious cosmic version of Mario or Luigi. But Cosmic Mario wasn't quite the same as Shadow Mario. Rather than a translucent dark blue, Cosmic Mario looked more like a night sky, with a deep blue filled with stardust. So a dark blue Mario doppelganger would appear to rival Mario. Yeah, that's certainly similar to Shadow Mario. But the similarities don't end there. Shadow Mario's theme song in Mario Sunshine is an arrangement of the underground theme from Super Mario Bros. And the same can be said about the Cosmic Mario here in Mario Galaxy. It's a different arrangement, but it's undoubtedly still based on the underground theme. And even more interesting, in Japanese, the Cosmic Mario is actually referred to as Shadow Mario. Just not the same Shadow Mario. Confusing, isn't it? In any case, Cosmic Mario doesn't antagonize Mario in the same way as Shadow Mario. Instead, it's actually similar in purpose to Il Pantissimo from Mario Sunshine, challenging Mario to a race to the star. Could this be what he used the paintbrush he found for? As silly as that would be, we've basically established that seemed like a dead lead, while this cosmic entity is more of just a similarity. Moving on, the Shadow Mario idea continued with the Cosmic Clones, appearing in both Super Mario Galaxy 2 and Super Mario 3D Land. Although both versions have bright yellow eyes, their bodies take on a dark red glow in Galaxy 2 and purple in 3D Land. But instead of being a true rival, these clones are more like obstacles, appearing at specific levels and mimicking Mario's exact movements, forcing Mario to stay on the move to keep one step ahead. Following the Cosmic Clones, the Shadow Mario idea next appeared in 2021's Bowser's Fury, the side mode added exclusively to the Switch port of Super Mario 3D World. But this time, these doppelgangers, called Fury Shadows, specifically take on the look of Luigi, only with glowing red eyes and look to be created out of the same black paint that infected Bowser. Furthermore, these Shadow Luigis are kinda jerks, taunting Mario to pursue them. Talk about bad manners. These Fury Shadows are actually incredibly close to the Shadow Mario we all know and love from Mario Sunshine. They taunt, they need to be pursued, and drop the main collectible upon defeat, being Cat Shines in this case. It's kinda like every Episode 7 in Mario Sunshine. The only difference here is, well, we know it's not Bowser Jr. in disguise, because he's Mario's ally throughout this entire game, wielding his paintbrush to help you take down the Fury Shadow and stop Bowser. And we're not done yet as the most recent Shadow Mario-like entity is this Rift Mario found in Super Mario Bros. Wonder that appears only during certain wonder effects. This eerie Mario clone is similar in appearance to the Fury Shadow, but is bad to taking on specifically Mario's appearance. But this time, it's covered in small white spots, almost like a night sky, making it appear like a fusion between Cosmic Mario and the Fury Shadow. But perhaps the biggest difference here is the lack of legs. This eerie Rift Mario floats around instead, following the player's exact movements as an ever-present threat during the Wonder Effect. Functionally, it's also identical to the Cosmic Clones, except there's only a single one rather than a series of them. And for now, that wraps up the journey of Shadow Mario, because even though the character might be missing in name, as an idea, he continues to live on. But there's still one last element we want to talk about, and it's literally an element being Metal Mario. 
Yeah, the same Metal Mario power-up that debuted in Super Mario 64, years before Shadow Mario was even a thing, as it could be argued that this is the original Evil Mario doppelganger. Let me explain. Even though Metal Mario started off as a power-up in Super Mario 64, he appeared as a rival character just a few years later in Super Smash Bros. for the Nintendo 64, three years before Shadow Mario would appear. Hell, he'd even appear in the same way in Super Smash Bros. Melee, still preceding Sunshine by a year. Now, we don't know for sure that this Metal Mario isn't just a powered-up version of Mario challenging the player, but it's clearly presented in an antagonistic way. Furthermore, Metal Mario went on to become a playable character himself shortly after his first Smash Bros. appearance in Mario Golf on the Nintendo 64, making him a precursor to Shadow Mario's appearance in the next sequel, Toadstool Tour. And perhaps most interestingly, one of Metal Mario's alternate costumes looks shockingly similar to Shadow Mario, again, years before he existed. And perhaps it's not a coincidence that Metal Mario stopped appearing as a separate entity for 10 years after Mario Sunshine's release, only appearing specifically as a power-up in a few games, like Mario Party and Mario 64 DS. It seemed like Shadow Mario was being set up to replace Metal Mario as a separate entity and THE definitive Mario clone. Except, it didn't quite work out that way. Because while Shadow Mario wouldn't ever appear playable again outside of his one appearance in Toadstool Tour, Metal Mario made a triumphant return in 2011's Mario Kart 7, seemingly for no rhyme or reason. It wasn't even tied to any other recent appearances. He just randomly showed up as one of the four newcomer drivers. And ever since, he's managed to stick around through Mario Kart 8, Mario Tennis Open, Mario Sports Superstars, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and Mario Kart Tour. While he didn't quite become a mainstay for every Mario spin-off game, he was surprisingly prominent throughout the 2010s. But it makes one wonder, why did Metal Mario make a comeback and not Shadow Mario? Well, it could simply be due to practical gameplay reasons. The Metal Power-Up is typically portrayed as very heavy and powerful, like in Mario 64 or Smash Bros., whereas Shadow Mario appears to be more lightweight and speedy, perhaps explaining his original higher voice. And it may just be that many of these spin-offs needed a heavier, more powerful character compared to Mario, as Baby Mario was fulfilling the lighter, faster Mario slot, so perhaps Shadow Mario simply wasn't needed. Furthermore, Shadow Mario might just not fit the themes of later Mario titles, because Shadow Mario was made with a very specific purpose that tied into the themes of darkness from Mario Sunshine with the Shine Sprite's disappearance casting Isle Delfino into darkness. Chasing after Mario's shadow to restore the sunlight to the land was part of the entire theme. While the idea of an evil doppelganger did stick around in future games, perhaps Shadow Mario specifically just didn't fit in anymore. Plus, with Bowser Jr. becoming a core Mario character on his own, and now rarely using his tactics and abilities from Mario Sunshine, does Shadow Mario even have a place left in this world? Well, the paintbrush that created Shadow Mario is still closely associated with Bowser Jr., even appearing as his main weapon in Bowser's Fury. So maybe there's still a glimmer of hope. Like, say, if Bowser Jr. gets introduced in a future Mario movie, perhaps we could see the return of his clever shadowy disguise used in the film. Of course, this would likely mean Professor E. Gad has to show up as well, as the paintbrush's original inventor. Yeah, the one and the same Professor E. Gad from Luigi's Mansion. Even though he doesn't appear in Super Mario Sunshine, both Flood and the paintbrush are his inventions. Not only does Bowser Jr. even state that he got his paintbrush from a strange old man in a white coat, but it even has his logo on it, which is E. Gad's own head for some reason. And while E. Gad may not have created the paintbrush with the intent of it being used to create a clone, it is rather suspect that he later gets pretty familiar with the idea of making clones, considering he eventually invented Gooigi, the, well, gooey clone of Luigi in the Luigi's Mansion games. Although, he's a friendly partner in this case. Egad also made another, much lesser known clone that actually is a rival. Meet Robo Mario, a computer exclusive opponent in Mario Kart Arcade GP and its sequel. As the name implies, it's a robotic replica of Mario. But instead of the M emblem on the hat, 
Robo Mario Sports EGADS logo. It only appears in the challenge game of the Rainbow Cup. While Robo Mario has never been playable in the Mario Kart series, it does make one curious if their existence laid the foundation for Meta Mario's appearance later on in Mario Kart 7. Being a rival opponent though, it just would have been nice if instead of Robo Mario, it was Shadow Mario after all. A main antagonist turned pro golf player, with painting skills wicked enough to get Mario thrown in prison, the alter ego of Bowser Jr. made a strong impact at the start of the GameCube era, big enough that he's the young Koopa's final smash in several Smash Bros. games. And for now, that might be all we have to remember him by. His physical presence may only live on through a special attack, but the ideas set in motion with Shadow Mario live on in many different Mario games, from menacing clones to the re-emergence of another iconic Mario form in several spin-off titles. Perhaps we'll see Shadow Mario make a formal return if Bowser Jr. is introduced in the Mario movies, and with Jr. keeping his paintbrush even in recent games, there may always be a chance to see him reappear in a future game too. But until then, we'll just be left forever wondering where he went, and if we'll ever actually see him again. But what do you guys think? Could Shadow Mario ever strike again? Where would you like to see him make his return? And is there anything or anyone else that's gone missing that you want found? Let us know down in the comments below, and maybe we'll cover it in a future episode. Thank you all for watching, and make sure to subscribe to Game Explained for future Missing in Action episodes, and plenty more on gaming as well, of course.